Look at the play differential. Night and day different. It's not that many third downs from Wake Forest. NC State doing a good job. Just time of possession. It's been the key factor in this game, and especially as you get into the fourth quarter. How does that take a toll on this Wake Forest front seven defensively is the question. Bachmeyer has had a tough day. We thought he might get to the 10,000-yard career passing mark. But Bailey is the one who's been very impressive today. That's Wesley Grimes to the 30-yard line. And a Wolfpack first down. Accurate strike from Bailey. Trusting his guy on the outside lane. We've seen that route a few times, that curl or comeback. Trayvon West is the injured Demon Deacon. It's on balance, good footwork. Ball just pops out of his hands. Clean spiral right on the face mask. It's good QB play. He was the one that made the tackle there. Tried to get up. Yeah, Trayvon West got rolled up on it. That ankle trying to make that tackle. The reserve corner for Wake Forest. He's gonna need some help just to get on his feet. Yep, he's hurt. These are all career best for Bailey. Yards, attempts, completions. And for those of you that were not with us, Grayson McCall started this game and took a pair of vicious hits on the same play and had to be taken off on a stretcher. And we're still hoping to get some good news as to his condition in the hospital. Concepcion out of the backfield carries down to the 21-yard line. Sometimes as a, as a backup quarterback, too, when you just get in the ball game, as we're seeing the run right there to Concepcion, we've talked about it many times today, different ways to get the ball in his hands. But back to C.J. Bailey, sometimes when you're a backup quarterback and you're just thrust into action and don't have the whole week to think about, hey, the stakes and every last read and triple think, double think, the whole deal, and just go out there and just play ball. I feel like we're seeing a little bit of that from C.J. Bailey today of just go out there and react because game plan wise play call wise has been a lot different than last week down to the end zone and it is a touchdown what a grab by Jolie and what a throw by Bailey I mean that has Scott jumping up and down from Scott's cheering after that incredible play. That's an awesome throw by the young quarterback who's getting more and more confident with each quarter that goes by. Trusting his guy, Justin Jolie, to make a play across the middle. Putting it where only he can go get a rebound. Comes down with it in the end zone. It's a great throw and catch. Point after for Vine set. NC State has not missed a point after since 2000. Mario Williams, obviously, same deal. Pitt down the road has just taken a lead over North Carolina, 31-24. We'll see the Tar Heels next week here on the CW Network. They have been real. After getting off to a good start, down to their third quarterback on the year. And what else is going on? around football let's check back in with mike and pitsy in the studio guys all right tom time for cw studio updates Don't territory two i know you're up in your own uh, own side of the field but at this stage in the game you might have to have that mindset third down and a long two and Able to sneak through there, Claiborne. I just don't know why they have not run the ball more today. I really don't understand it. Bachmeyer's not having a good day. I think Coach probably agrees with you, too, giving, the, giving Claiborne two carries this drive. Now up to 12 total on this drive. If he breaks through and keeps his balance there, too, he might have a house call. A lot of time left in this game. You can play... You can have a long, sustained drive here and still be fine in this ballgame. And Bachmeyer coughs it up. He's hit. It looks like Wake Forest covered it up. 
Saw it last week when they brought DK Kaufman on a safety blitz. This week it's to Marcus Cooley from that nickel spot. Gets around the edge, causes that fumble. I don't know how NC State didn't come down with that. Heads up play, but I believe it was Nick Sharp yep. on the bottom of the pile coming up with that thing. So a loss of two, second down and 12. Good protection this time now, having to run around. And over near the far sideline, nobody was open, and then a late hit, and that is a silly penalty on NC State. I think they got Betty back there. Personal foul, left of the passer, defense number eight, 15-yard penalty, automatic down. Bachmeyer is going to throw this ball and then how many steps after one, two, and the full full hit. You're also. And here's another one. Blitz coming. Bachmeyer gets it away down the sideline. He had a pair of targets down there. He had Fields along with Morin. Second down. It's really been the theme of this day. You have NC State's defense and their defensive coordinator, Tony Gibbs. Rough pass options, even though it's not necessarily intentional. Intercepted in and out of the hands of Claiborne. So now it's fourth down. You're trailing by 10 with 9.34 to go. And it looks like the Demon Deacons are going to go for it. And that's the second screen they've dialed up to Claiborne in this second half. And if he catches that cleanly, that one can go. We saw it two drives ago on the other end zone. When they watch that film on Monday, those are going to be missed opportunities just from an execution standpoint. They're very timely play calls. That they're there if they just come down with the catch. Empty backfield. Four-man rush. Trying to convert on fourth down. And Bachmeyer's going to run it. He's going to get it. All the way inside the 35-yard line to keep their hopes alive. They spot it at the 32 first down. As we look at the ace replay, watch just the A-gaps right in the center of the defense. You're not keeping your rushing lanes. It's hard to do that. You're trying to pin your ear, ears back. Hank Bachmeyer is a capable runner. Hefty, too, 215. Putting his shoulder down a little bit, getting some extra yards. Under nine to go, and Wake with the football trailing by 10. Playboy looking for a hole, he finds one. And he's off to the races, and he will score a touchdown. Demond Claiborne, 32-yard touchdown scamper. And that makes it a 30-27 to 27 with a point after. And Scott from Scott is back and cheering that incredible run. What a juke this was by Demond Claiborne. You said it, Tom. Get him the rock. Allow him to run this football. He puts his foot in the ground, jukes out that corner. He's their best player on offense for a reason. Great job by Wake Forest getting the rock on that drive. So now the point after to make it a one-score game, a three-point game. He changes, and it'll be first and 10 for NC State. Now, you know, with 8.43 to go, you don't expect the offense to go 14 plays and chew up seven and a half minutes on a drive like this, but you got to hang on to the football for a while, and clearly, if you can get some points, all the better. And the stat that jumps out for me is this no interceptions right there. He had the same thing last week. It was the difference in the game. They won the turnover margin. For a young quarterback, that's something you're always monitoring. Wicked you put up a three and out and uh, get the ball right back. Third down and four. And in this scenario, we've seen a lot of Justin Jolie from NC State. We've seen him dial up some things for Kevin Concepcion in the slot as well. Keep an eye out for both those guys. Third down and four. They need to get to the 35-yard line. Here comes a blitz. And it's incomplete. Looking for Raphael. Was being chased by Davis and Quincy Bryant. 
So it is a three and out stop. Hunt returns for a touchdown this year. A penalty flag well behind the line of scrimmage. Fair catch at the 17 yard line, but we wait on the penalty here. They may make them punt this again. Now, if this is against a defense. Illegal formation, no. kicking team. The five yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. Okay. So, Dave Claus is team with a chance. Trailing by three. 7.19 to go. Now you have Morin. Morin standing at his own 30. But we know what kind of leg that Newcaster has. Boy, this is a bomb here. All the way back to the 20. Morin cuts it back up to the inside. Good return. 15-yard return by Morin. And good field position with 7.07 left for the team on the short end of this 30-27 score. It's not been a sharp day for Bachmeyer. 12 of 28 for 109 yards. He's thrown a pick. He's fumbled for a turnover. He's thrown two touchdowns. Now, the last drive, they did not throw the ball one time. They, they might ought to think about it. I'm sure, I'm sure they are. <laughs> but you know they'll throw it on first down now. A little option here, and they pitch it. Claiborne looking for room and none there. You can't play that play, the option, better defensively than NC State just did. Well said. Looked like it was uh, Betty at the linebacker spot. That's Sam linebacker spot. It's Hank Bachmeyer's job to read the pitch man. The pitch man was Betty. And when you're athletic and taking the quarterback, but then still keeping your leverage to get outside on Claiborne, it's a great job by, the, by Betty at that Sam linebacker, Sam linebacker spot. All right, so loss of a yard. Second down and 11. Still Claiborne in the backfield. And they give it to him. Good hole up through the middle got a big chunk of it back but it brings up a third down spotted at the 42 yard line third and three look at the ace replay right here is running behind his big tight end henry lodge 6-6-2-40 again seeing that patience there. still claiborne in the backfield They give it to him. Good hole up through the middle. Got a big chunk of it back, but it brings up a third down. Spotted at the 42-yard line. Third and three. Look at the ace replay right here. He's running behind his big tight end, Henry Lodge, 6'6", 240. Again, seeing that patience that Claiborne has, and then right when he sees the lane, it's the first to get it. All right, so a third down and three. Lake Forest needs to get up to the 45-yard line for a first down. Handed off to the wide receiver, and depending on the spot here, Deuce Alexander, it looks like they gave him enough for the first down. They did to the 45. Love the play call by offensive coordinator Warren Rochero. Defense is expecting an inside zone run play. We've seen that all day. The first time we've seen a little jet sweep getting Deuce Alexander's name a few times making contested catches right there getting involved in the run game. Needed three, got three. Fresh set of downs. Trailing by three. Is Wake with 5.30 to go. Back to the ground and... Damon Claiborne, he didn't see much room, so he just dove forward and is able to pick up three. I'll tell you what, that slow mesh, which we've talked about a couple times today, where they're really riding that handoff in there to force the defense to commit, they're asking their receivers to hold on to their blocks for a long time. It's a good thing they have Horatio Fields, 6'3", 205, to that side. He's done a good job blocking so far today. It's actually a game of two. So second down and eight. I mean, that was blown up 
right from the start. They brought the house defensively right there. What else is going on around college football today, Mike? All right, Tom, time for a CW. Tell you what, we saw him a couple of weeks ago. They, they got a good thing going down there. All right, what are you thinking here, Max? Cool. Yeah, you have, a, you have a decision if you're Wake Forest because try to pick it all up here on a vertical shot. Or do you say, hey, we're in four-down territory with 3.55 left, go something underneath and play four-down territory. It'll be interesting to see what Wake does. Well, in these situations, we've seen a lot of blitzing from NC State. That does not look like to be the case now. They send five. Crossing pattern caught by Claiborne, so that answers your question. They get half of it back, and you, you know they're going. I mean, you're, you're down to 340. Down by three points. Yeah, like we said, that to me is exactly the play call of, hey, let's throw it for four or five, get to third and manageable. You're also saying, hey, if Claiborne can break a tackle there, he'd pick up the first down. In this scenario, third and five, they've tried to get Demond Claiborne, they're running back one on one. Let's see if they do it here. And let's see if State brings a blitz. They're showing blitz. Yep, here they come. And Bachmeyer gets it away. It is a first down to the 32 to Deuce Alexander, and that's the best play that Bachmeyer has made in quite some time. That is a gutsy quarterback play right here. You know you're going to get hit. You know you got to take this shot. He's almost throwing that football blind. There is no secret. NC State's done this the majority of the game today. Bring in the house. Can you win one-on-one? -on -one? Quarterback, can you get the ball out of your hands? Bachmeyer, great job there. Well, now we're down to 245. First down. Carney in the back. Field. As they give Claiborne a breather, they hand it off to Carney and power running straight ahead inside the 30 down to the 28 yard line. 2.30 to go and a carry for six yards on first down. They are certainly well within field goal range here, although bear in mind, at the end of the game last week, a 42 yard attempt was missed by Dennis. Right now, it would be roughly a 45-yard attempt. And they're going to let this thing run all the way down to the two-minute timeout. Wake has two timeouts remaining. And NC State in front. College football. These two schools have been going at it since 1910. Ball of the 28-yard line. Tiptoeing around. Able to stay on his feet and pick up yardage on second down is Claiborne. It brings up a third down. And a timeout is called by NC State. So the Wolfpack has one timeout remaining. Wake has two. You got a third and two coming up. Keep in mind, too, this is a familiar scenario for both these teams. NC State came down to a Hail Mary last week versus NIU. Wake Forest close. So now it's fourth down. And NC State will call a timeout. This would be a 44 up there behind their big nose tackle, Brandon Cleveland. All right, a week ago, Dave Clawson's team had a chance to tie the game at the end of regulation. But Dennis missed a 42-yard field goal. His career long is 46. He'd be right in that neighborhood here, and it looks like they're keeping the offense on the field on fourth down rather than trying to tie it up. And one thing that goes underrated in this scenario, too, is if your offensive coordinator has a play call that you love versus a look you feel confident you're going to get, Sometimes this is the opportunity to take advantage of that. But will they snap it or just try and draw him offside? And then call a timeout. They're going to play it. Fourth down. Here we go. Good protection and a first down to the 20-yard line. So Dave Clawson rolls the dice. And Alexander the reception. And now they're thinking about a touchdown to win this thing. Exactly. Five. Now, they do have a couple of timeouts left. They throw it in the flat, wide open as Mays. He's inside the 10, down to the 5, and run out of bounds inside at the 3. And that'll stop the clock at a minute and 5 seconds remaining. This is where the offensive identity for Wake Forest comes through. That slow mesh, you're so worried about them handing the ball off to Jamon Claiborne. Safeties and linebackers get their eyes into the box. 
and you slip a receiver out into the flat for an easy completion. Good recognition by Hank Bachmeyer and a strong, accurate throw on the outside. All right. First and goal for the Demon Deacons. 105 to play. Wake Forest trails by three. Claiborne in the backfield gets a handoff. He will find the end zone. A pair of fourth down conversions on the drive for Wake Forest. And it's cashed in at the end on the run by Claiborne from three yards out. And how about Wake Forest down by 10 when the quarter began? And how about another juke from Damon Claiborne? We said he's an NFL type of back. You're seeing it right there on back-to-back -back touchdown rushes. It's him in a safety, him in a linebacker. He makes you miss in the hole, and it's not a wasting time juking or anything like that. It's put your foot in the ground, give him a shake, get uphill. Two drives in a row, Claiborne's taken over and got him a touchdown. 136 rushing yards today for Damon Claiborne. And a couple of touchdowns. 13 play drive that chews up six minutes. He had 135 yards rushing, which was a career high in the season opener. And one more than that here today for a new career best. to go. NC State out of timeouts. Remember, they burned all those timeouts. They had the one on defense halfway through the third quarter. They spent two on that drive to leave them a little bit of room here on the back side should Wake score. Of course, they were hoping it would be trying to get some energy on your on your squad to trust your guys to execute in that scenario and hasn't been pretty the entire day. It's a great drive they had. All right, well, can the youngster Bailey respond with a minute one remaining good protection and he throws an interception on the first play picked off by Branson Combs and the Wake Forest Demon Deacon sideline erupts I mean this team feels like this could easily be a four and one start to their season with the only game where they just got whacked but if you're Dave Doran you go to the fourth quarter up 10 and you know your offense just can't sustain anything for you there in that fourth quarter Branson excuse me sorry Branson Combs coming up with that interception he was a guy before this game that staff told us he's only going to play if it's an emergency situation if it's a two minute only got him going but a couple of big time plays by Bachmeyer on a pair of fourth down conversions Dave Clawson going for it and he'll leave here with a victory 34 to 30 our final score what a game presented today by our friends at Verizon what a gutsy win trụ cột mới chính là những người duy trì thọ săn quỷ tỷ lệ những người có các bậc thấp hơn họ có bị giết là rất khủng khiếp nhưng bọn họ thì lại khác chính kiếm sĩ có thứ hạng cao nhất trong thợ săn quỷ các kiếm sĩ yêu tú tập hợp viên trụ gen goku không cần phải xét xử gì hết bảo vệ cho quỷ là hoàn toàn sáu phạm quy tắc rồi chúng ta có thể tự giải quyết được chúng ta sẽ chặt đầu hết bọn quỷ nham chủ thật là một đứa trẻ đáng thương đáng thương làm sao sinh ra trên thế giới này đúng là điều đáng buồn mà hà trụ mui chi dâu hình dạng của đám mây kia được gọi là gì ấy nhỉ để ta giết cô ta đúng vậy thật hào nhoáng si anh si trụ cột tranh luận xe nít su in nó xúc mô sa tan su câu nê su câu đâu rồi quan trọng hơn thì chúng ta nên làm gì với tô minh cờ đây sa chu tôi có chút đau